Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to finish building our 441 cubic inch LS3 engine. Before we get too far into the video, we finally have merch. So if you go to smettingperformance.com, we now have a merchandise button up on the top toolbar, and we have hats and t-shirts finally available. So check them out while they are in stock. So, in part one of this build series, we assembled the short block of this 441 cubic inch LS3. Quick recap on the build, we are using a Dart SHP aftermarket engine block, Smetig Performance 6.125 4340 forged H-beam connecting rods with ARP2000 hardware, a center counterweighted crankshaft, topped off with some JE2618 forged pistons. This engine is going to be naturally aspirated only, so the bearing clearances and the ring gap are a little tighter than we normally would run on a nitrous or turbo build. And with this engine, with our 11 degree Smetig Performance cylinder heads, is going to be 11.9 to one compression. Because it is going on a dart block, we can utilize the fifth and sixth head bolt fastener. However, these heads still work on stock blocks, guys. We only offer them in six bolt because why wouldn't we? If you've got an LS3 block, these will still bolt up just fine to your engine. The camshaft, if my memory is right, is I think 247, 258 on a 112 lobe separation angle plus three degrees advance. It is hydraulic roller, and we are going to run our Gatorman Link Bar hydraulic roller lifters. Really nice lifter. These are gonna be perfect for this application. And of course, we're going to run a upgraded LS3 rocker arm with our 11 degree 260cc CNC ported heads. So step one, we finally got the head gaskets in stock. They're the right thickness to give us 40 thousandths of quench for this combination. So we're going to bolt the cylinder heads down, get a push rod length measured, and then we can see about getting some push rods. Before we install our cylinder heads, of course, we want to drop in our really nice Gatorman lifters. So I always coat the bodies of the lifters and the wheel on the roller with some assembly lubricant. Um, currently, I am using Clevite Bearing Guard. It's a thick red assembly lube, um, offers a lot of startup protection until the oil system gets pumping. And we use this pretty much on everything inside of our engines from the bearings to the lifters, um, wrist pins, valve train contact points. The only thing we don't use this on, of course, are the cylinder walls where the piston rings go. We use just regular driven break-in engine oil on that. This would be way too thick to use on your rings. So we're going to get these lifters dropped in really quick, and then we'll start bolting down our cylinder heads. This is the thread lubricant that we use on all of our fasteners. It's a CMD brand, high pressure ultra torque thread lubricant. They got a long name for it. Uh, I really like this stuff over the ARP branded lube because it is a hell of a lot cleaner um, to use with and work with. If it gets on your fingers, it just wipes off. Um, the ARP stuff is nice, but in the bottom of the oil pan, if you build a full engine with it, the oil pan is just covered in in it basically, it doesn't really wash out. Whereas the CMD seems to blend into the oil and then um, after your first oil change, the motor's super clean on the inside. So we're gonna coat this on all the studs. Um, in the near future, we plan to do a thread lubricant test where we actually measure and compare the different um, frictional uh, differences between ARP lube, uh, engine oil, uh, engine uh, assembly grease, CMD, and another specialty grease that uh, comes with CP Carrillo rods and do a little test. So subscribe so you stay updated. All right, got all these studs nice and coated. Now these heads are six bolt, so we do have some studs coming out the bottom. We need to get some CMD on those as well. A little bit goes a long way on this stuff. Now we can take our heads, 
and drop them onto DOS motor. Might need to finesse it a little bit. Technical tap here and there. What are we caught on? We're caught on something. There it goes. Now we can take this sides. Get them lined up. When you have six fasteners, it is a precise fit, but it will pop onto the dowels nicely. And there we go. Now we can start installing the 23 nuts per cylinder head that these heads are gonna be held onto by. Pretty crazy. Way inside of there, right above the lifter link bar, there is a stud now that we need to thread the sixth bolts to, nuts to, and then these heads will finally be installed. It helps to have dry fingers doing this because if you get that nut too oily from the thread lubricant or the assembly grease, it makes it a nightmare to try to get that nut to thread all the way up the stud. All right, these four are in. Let's get them torqued. And there we go, one side down, one side to go. For you guys, that was probably 30 seconds to 45 seconds, but 25 minutes later in real life, our Smedic 11 degree heads are bolted down to this 441 Monster. We've got our Gatorman link bar lifters poking through nicely. You can see all those studs holding the heads down as well as the other studs holding these heads down. Now we can bolt down a couple rocker arms and get a push rod length. Push rod length has been measured and checked. Right now at zero lash, I have 8.120 overall tip to tip. With this lifter, I wanna run 40 thousandths preload in this engine application. So I need to order a push rod that's gonna measure 8.160 tip to tip. So I'll get those ordered in a couple days they'll be here and then we can resume building this engine. But for you guys, it'll be right now. Just like that, push rods are in stock for this guy. Now we can reassemble, I'm sorry, now we can continue assembling the valve train on this motor. While we were waiting for the push rods, I did go ahead and install an ATI super damper as well as this low profile intake manifold because this engine is going into a C6 Corvette. So this manifold's gonna give us all the clearance we need back here 
so he doesn't have to modify the chassis. Got our push rods. I always run thread lubricant on the exhausts and then always, always run thread sealant on your intake rocker arm bolts. The motor is totally assembled and next week's video we are going to dyno test this powerhouse. Quick rundown, it's a 441, 11.9 to 1 compression with our 11 degree 6 bolt cylinder head. Camshaft is 247, 258, 112 plus 3, running our Gatorman link bar hydraulic roller lifter and this low profile intake manifold. Leave a comment below. Let me know how much horsepower do you guys think this 441 is gonna make and we'll see what happens next week. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.